Today, I'll be giving you my first impressions on the Zoom Span 3 by Nike. And throughout the video, I'll give you my thoughts on the shoes so far regarding their features and wearing them for running, hit workouts, and casually. The Zoom Span 3 released at the beginning of 2021. It retails for 80 US dollars and I got them in US size 11, which is true to size for me. Starting at the upper, the shoe features a surprising three different mesh materials, one at the toe box, one at the midfoot, and one at the heel. But even though they're all different, Nike claims that the upper was designed with airflow and breathability in mind. Although this only seems true primarily for the mesh located at the toe box, which is actually stretchy, flexible, and thin enough to be breathable. And it also combines perfectly with the wider toe box to provide plenty of room for your forefoot. And on top of that, something quite interesting about this mesh is that we've actually seen it on the channel before, as it's the same one featured on the toe box on the Zoom Prevail. And out of all three types of mesh, the one that makes up the window at the midfoot is the one that I believe feels the most structured and durable. But besides this knitted mesh at the midfoot, the Span 3 also features a flywire cable system to support the laces. This was included with the purpose of providing a more secure and stable feeling at the midfoot, and it really does. But perhaps the fit is a little too secure. I noticed a bit of extra pressure where the upper and the midsole connect once I laced up the shoes and became a bit concerned. But I do think that it could be part of the mesh, the knitted mesh at the midfoot, complementing the purpose of the cables and perhaps creating a little bit extra pressure in order to make the shoe feel more secure. Another part of the shoe that provides great security is the collar, as it features cushioning all around even though the first time I saw it, I thought that it was less cushioning than what we saw with the Spam 4, but it turned out to be just about the same. It's meant to provide comfort and stability for your ankle, and it really gets the job done since it wraps nicely around your ankle, but never becomes uncomfortable. But then the collar actually combines with the tongue to provide an overall and complete lockdown fit, since the tongue is structured and it feels very solid and cushioned. And this was incredibly helpful from the first time I put them on, by reducing the pressure from the laces, but also making my ankle feel secure and stable. The midsole and outsole are literally the same ones featured on the Spam 4, and just like I said for that shoe, it's a more solid midsole, so it provides plenty of stability, just not a lot of energy return. Plus, the air zoom unit was a bit noticeable, but it also felt like it was slightly more limited with the responsiveness compared to something like the Winflow 8 or the Pegasus 38. And I'm not able to fully test the outsole since I'm running inside thanks to the freezing weather here in Illinois, but so far it feels like it gets the job done. I did notice that it isn't as loud as the one on the Spam 4, but you guys did bring to my attention the fact that these shoes are prone to start a squeaking noise after some time of use. I haven't heard anything in the week and a half that I've been wearing them, but I'll keep testing them and see if it comes up for the full review. Running with the Span 3 has been pretty decent, just like it was for the Span 4, but so far I think I prefer the 3. The midsole is once again literally the same, the stack heights, the slightly rigid foam, and the air zoom unit. All of these components combine to provide a very stable running experience, but the only thing is that the air zoom unit isn't that responsive or noticeable for that matter, but it still gives you that bit of a push when lifting your feet off of the ground. Also, the wider toe box and really the wider forefoot area of the shoe felt really open and allowed plenty of freedom for my wider feet, making the running experience with the Span 3 a lot more comfortable. For the upper, I gotta give credit to the cushioning at the collar, the three types of mesh, and the flywire cables because the shoe feels very flexible and secure when you're running as my feet never felt like they were loose inside the shoe and my strides felt very consistent and natural. The extra pressure that I mentioned earlier where the upper and the midsole connect does come out a little bit but I also believe that it's something that should go away as you break the shoes in. The flexible upper helped a lot for hit workouts, but the mesh at the toe box specifically is the one that stole the show for me. When I was landing jumps or jumping back up, it gave my forefoot plenty of flexibility and it combined with the extra room on this part of the shoe to provide a very natural feeling. The mesh was also helpful for exercises that require me to flex my feet like push-ups and planks and for planks specifically the combination of the upper and midsole were incredibly helpful in order to maintain a stable 
in proper form. And besides that, the collar was locked in throughout the entire session and made the shoe feel even more secure. So the Span 3 is another shoe that I think could be used obviously for running, but also as a gym shoe. Just be mindful of heavy weightlifting since the shoe isn't entirely flat and can cause an injury. But I also think that it's pretty decent to wear casually, primarily because I'm a huge fan of the colorway and the way that it gives the silhouette a very unique look. Plus, it also feels comfortable and roomy when walking around perhaps a little just a little too secure at the midfoot thanks to the fly wire but so far it has been manageable like always i tried the shoe while wearing jeans and i actually don't mind the way that it looks but again i'm pretty sure the colorway sold me on it i still think that it looks better with more athletic or leisure outfits but overall when it comes to wearing it casually it's a bit of a tough choice between this one and the span 4 but when it comes to performance and really everything else however However, I actually prefer the Span 3. It just feels like Nike took a couple steps backwards with the changes that they introduced on the Span 4. But if you want to dive deeper into what's different between the Span 3 and 4, make sure you watch the next video where I'll be breaking down the differences between the two. Thank you for watching. Pablo, out.